favorite medium uh, of, of, uh, of a device for augmented reality? Yeah. Well, you know, I got this colleague at Art Center. <coughs> this is guy, what the heck is his name? That's the names that go first. But <laughs> there's a lot of people in Southern California who are media theorists, and I hang out with them. <laughs> so there's this set of thought among the Southern California Digital Scholars Initiative, I guess that's what they're calling it now, that we're moving into an era of what's called the unimodern unimedium. <laughs> yeah. That's a Scrabble word. It is. <laughs> you ran out of it. Is, you know, this, is, this is really, you know, kind of culture theory stuff. You know, and what's the unimodern unimedia? Well, in the unimodern unimedia, <laughs> content just sort of gets scrambled up and then appears more or less on command on any form factor you want. And everything sort of belongs to the compositor. I mean, everything's all special effects. There really isn't a medium. There's just a series of kind of digital interventions where I sort of go out and I get stuff and then I visualize it or info visit or you know compile it or move it or make it eyeball sticky in some particular way. So it doesn't really matter if I'm a film scholar. If I'm a film scholar now I'm probably on Facebook anyway. Then I'm like, okay I'm gonna link to this film. But we you know what film? There's no film. Well it's on YouTube. Well there's no tube. There aren't any tubes. Well, it's in my channel on Vimeo. Okay, there is no channel on Vimeo. There really isn't a channel. And only broadcast television has channels. And broadcast channel television's dying because there's no reason for it to be taking up that much spectrum. It's just like sitting there as a sort of absurd thing and you can watch it all through another box anyway, time shifted, move it around, so forth, so on. So, you know, this has freaky effects on people. So you end up with stuff like transmedia campaigns. It's like, Gee, I think we better do a transmedia campaign with this. So, so what is it? Well, you know, it's like this little yellow Pokemon guy, and it's a card game, okay? But what kind of card game? Well, you know, it's actually a card game, and it's like a Japanese uh, uh, animated series. And it's a card game, and a Japanese animated, and it's a collector's thing where the kids form their own economy. So it's like a little economy where the kids trade the cards, and then they watch the cartoons. Oh, and then the movie comes out. But then we have the website that supports the movie that like tells you the cards to get so you to trade them in the thing. It's like the thing of the, you know, and like some of them are four and some of them are seven. So now we've got to like segment. It's like a four-year-old Pokemon. This is like the 13 to 17-year-old frameway of the Pokemon where you can buy the clothes and the shoes and the earrings to go along with the key set and the card that trades back. Okay, what medium is that? <laughs> <laughs> there is no favorite medium in that. You know, it's not even a transmedia thing. Now, Pokemon is more like folk culture. It's like Christmas. You wouldn't say, what's your favorite Christmas medium? Oh, I like TV specials. No, I like reading Dickens. You know, Christmas is just like this thing. So, you know, that's the kind of situation we're rapidly moving into. You know, and I'm a guy who's basically an ink on paper kind of dude, because that's, you know, how I got into the world. But I've always been really interested in media and computation, and I always understood, I mean, I understood as soon as I got a word processor that it wasn't just a typewriter with a screen, you know, because it had like a modem and, and all these other functionalities built in, and, and to sort of say, oh, what kind of your, what's your favorite typewriter, an Apple IIe, is just a lie, because, you know, it's just not the same thing at all. So you know, augmented reality's got part of that problem because it's also a conceptual grab bag and there's sort of a million things you can do with it. And unless you're going and swatting people's hands all the time, they're always making like these exciting discoveries like, gee, highway signs are augmented reality. Because they're like interactive and they're like in a 3D space and like I can like see them and they like change my behavior. Okay, they're not fucking augmented reality. <laughs> They're highway signs, but on the other hand, they really are conceptually related to like navigating through cities, finding signposts. You could use a highway sign, it's like, we'll find the corner point. So like send me my GPS and like I can like attach things to this highway sign. It's like, well, this is like the highway sign. This is like the coolest augmented highway sign in Amsterdam. Alright. Well, you're gonna see that kind of blurring and that kind of unimodernity. You know, unimodernity means it doesn't even fucking matter how old it is. Or even if it's in the future or the past or now, there isn't any fine, you know, firm decisions. Like, I could walk up to this thing and, like, pull out my layer and see 16th century Amsterdam on the highway sign. 
that's a unimodern gesture of like hack space and time. It really broke, you know, in some profound way, and I don't really have any way to get back to it. It's like in unimodernity, there's no prime time. Ah, oh, it's a prime time show. How do you know? Because you know, they're like, it's 5 p.m. in Brazil, and that's when most of our users log on. And like, the users don't log on at any time. You know, I mean, you could look at it. You can see from your stats that there's like spikes in usage. Like, oh, they woke up in Shanghai, but you know, it's not like a universal time. It's like it just doesn't work out that way anymore. So it's unimodern, unimedia. There really isn't one medium. There's just sort of this giant dicing, mixing, and special effects machine we built. And then it's unimodern in the sense of like we're deliberately breaking down space and time, especially space. You know, really, especially space. It's like, it's really pretty weird that Texans teach augmented reality in California with Dutch people <laughs> paying for it. But, you know, that would have been weird in 1975, and in 20 years, that's gonna be, it'll be weird that that seemed weird. You know, I mean, the, the weirdest thing, I think the biggest challenge from that perspective is like telling my students about LAYAR and having them not just like show up in your developer boards. Why do they even need to be in a room with me? You know, I mean, why? Why shouldn't they just? I mean, the, the classrooms, you know, the classroom is modernist rather than unimodern, and it's you know, it's got a, it has a space and time. But in order to be involved in AR, you're kind of like breaking that down as much as you can. Some, you know, some things about that are really good. Other things about it are kind of a drag. Like, it'd be a drag for you if you had like thousands of eager students bugging you all the time. And I just say, look, you know, we have to. Sorry, Shvam. <laughs> well, just you know, and if you're if you're at social networking, you have to learn to say no, right? Because otherwise, you just sort of have to answer every piece of spam, and you know, everybody has to budget their unimodern time. It's just not enough time in the day, but. That's not. That's not. That's not a new thing in an architecture of participation. If you put something up on the web and say everybody come, sometimes nobody comes, and sometimes everybody comes, and then you get blown off. You know, so they're just standard classical difficulties of our period. <laughs>